We're breaking down the biggest X factor for each team in the AFC and NFC North today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dude, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league. The Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making Locked On NFL Scouting your first listen every day. And a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. Joe, happy national. Kyle and Joe wrap up two content series within 24 hours. Day to you. Big dub. We did the markets across the league positionally uh, as far as recent transactions and future forecasts. And now we are finishing the X factor dynamics that exist across the league uh, through our own evaluations of players that have been classified as to be determined. Like the, the big swings in outcomes for your team are probably going to lie with these players. So, shall we conclude? Here we got the North, the AFC North, the NFC North. We're right? starting with the NFC North. Okay. The, the National Football Conference North? Yes. yes okay. We're, we're going to start with the NFC North just because that was how it uh, it put, got put in the show sheet. And I, don't, I, don't, I don't like confusing people, you know? Yeah, don't so, confuse anybody. Yeah. So, we have eight teams. The NFC and AFC North squad, starting with the Green Bay Packers. And we're going to talk about through our evaluations what we feel is the biggest single unknown component of the team that is going to determine their success. So the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay is one of the more wild card teams in general. Like I was about to say there's a right answer, but there's there's several reasonable places you could take this to talk about the importance for Green Bay. I would agree, but my eyes go to these wide receivers, Christian Watson, Jaden Reed, Romeo dubs. I mean, those are going to be the top three. Sorry, pronunciation police. I don't know if it's dubs or Dobbs or whatever, but they always yell every eight months. But I mean, that's your top three, man. Those are your top three receivers. You don't have a veteran here. And so you're putting Jordan love into this great opportunity, right? That he's waited a long time for. And there's real, and not even a tight end, dude, there's, there's no vets there either. It's a couple of rookies in Musgrave and Kraft. And so to me, it's these developing weapons around a developing quarterback. That's that's the X factor, in my opinion. So you also have the offensive line, which is everything that's not Bakhtiari and Jenkins, plus who knows what Bakhtiari is going to be as he struggled with durability over the last few years. But for me, like I think you could talk about Jordan Love in a vacuum. You could also talk about uh, the the recent investments within the last two years in the NFL draft among in the youth movement on the defensive front. Quay Walker was a first round pick, right? Lucas Van Ness this year, first round pick for the Packers. Devontae Wyatt, first round pick. There's a lot riding on those guys as early investments in this front too. So I, I think for Green Bay, like the fact that you could talk about pass catchers, you could talk about the quarterback, you can talk about the defensive front seven, there's no shortage of options. Just pick your poison. Yeah. Anything else from Green Bay? No. I, the, the, the whole thing is an X factor. Right. The, the X factor team in the NFC is Green Bay. Yep. In my mind. Uh, next, we're going to talk about the Minnesota Vikings. Joe, I have a feeling I know where you're going. I got two directions I can go here. The floor is yours. Oh, see, I was going to give you the floor. That way I can just go the other way. No, the floor is yours. Okay, well, I think you're going to want to talk about the corners. So I will bring up Ed Ingram at right guard, where you feel like 
you've got a pretty good group otherwise on this offensive line with Derisaw and Cleveland and Bradbury and Brian O'Neill. And then there's Ed Ingram, who had his share of struggles last season as a rookie. And I think a piece like that that struggled as much as Ed Ingram did can really, really kind of mess up the entire rest of the unit, right? Offensive line is typically more the sum of the parts, right? And, and I feel like that's that's a weak link. And him taking a big step in year two would be huge for their offense. Especially considering the the changes in the offensive backfield and like, yeah, if you want to drum up Alexander Madison, go ahead. But he hasn't been a particularly efficient player throughout his early stages of his career, and they made the choice to bring him back. And you know, Dalvin Cook's not there anymore. And we'll see what what kind of momentum Dwayne McBride as a rookie can bring in as well. I think if I were going to go offense, I would talk about the running game in its totality. It's kind of the X factor for them. Uh, but, yeah, I, I do skew to the defense, and particularly the corners where – you have Brian Flores here uh, and what he has historically been. And you're looking at a cornerback room of Andrew Booth, second year player. We're not quite sure. A Caleb Evans. We're not sure. Makai Blackman, mid round draft pick. Kalon Barnes, speedster out of Baylor, but complete unknown. Jay Ward, another rookie. Tay Gowan, Jovan Williams. Jovan Williams, probably the best pedigree of anyone not named. Andrew Booth, as far as outside corner goes, and he didn't get teeth with New England playing the same system that he's presumably going to be asked to learn. And you have Byron Murphy in the nickel. Is he going to stay in the nickel? You can put him outside. And there's just a lot of moving parts there, a lot of unproven players. And I think that for me is why seeing how it worked with, with Flores in Miami and, and what he tried to do and, and how he tried to run it and walking the line of staying competitive, but having a youth movement, it's tough to do to thread the needle. It didn't work particularly gracefully for Miami when Flores was first there. That's where my eyes go. And I, I just don't have a lot of confidence in the group. Now maybe they'll go out and outperform my expectations. And if they do Bravo, I'll, I'll proudly wear the egg on my face. But that for me is just a critical component for Minnesota. Yeah. I think that's a, a really good answer. So run game and corner for the Minnesota Vikings. We have six teams left to get to here the rest of the way in this entire series. Uh, but first, take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 that you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's simply no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. So continuing through the NFC North, Joe, our next team is the Detroit Lions, who, as you can see, if you're on YouTube, on the ticker, um, it's our pick to win the division is the Detroit Lions. We have them forecasted for 10 wins in 2023. If it were me, I'd be talking about all these early draft picks as the X factor because they made investments at linebacker, tight end, and safety, and a running back that are not historically premier positions that they chose to invest premier capital in. And when you do that, you kind of do so with the expectation that your ROI is going to make it make sense. And now we've heard good things about Sam Laporta being the tight end one already. We've heard all the praise that's being heaped at you know, running back Jameer Gibbs in a backfield in which they chose to pay David Montgomery. Jack Campbell, I, I think, is a no-brainer to start. They heaped major praises there. And then with the injury to Chauncey Garner-Johnson, you have a major opportunity for safety Brian Branch. So I look at Detroit, and I'm like, dude, all these guys, all of these first and second round draft picks that they spent this year that are going to be hallmarks of the team for the next four years at minimum, if not longer. Those guys 
in my opinion, are the X factors for Detroit reaching or not reaching their ceiling this year. Very comprehensive response. I'm going to go a little bit more like lasered in player. Okay, here, hold on. Wow. What I don't I have no idea what just Oh, it's it's me. It's just just me here. All right, I uh the player for me that I think is the the definition of an X factor is Levi on Wuzuriki, the defensive tackle that they picked very high in the first in the second round a couple of years ago. And he's just been injured. And he's a player that I really liked coming out of Washington, but he's been hurt. And when I look at the Lions, I feel like they still need some more players to emerge here, particularly on the interior defensive line. And having a player like Levi on Un- Wuzuriki that has the pass rush ceiling that he does could really be big time for this defense. And so there's a big part of me that's not counting on everything, anything from Levi on Wuzuriki, but there's also a big part of me that acknowledges what he's capable of, the prospect that he was, and how if he were to become a thing for this defense, it would really move the needle, in my opinion. Okay. It's a good answer. As far as incomplete evaluations go, that's that's probably as good of an answer as you could provide on this roster, unless you were going to say Jamison Williams. Brother, I was, I love Jamison Williams. Love him. But, Same. man, I just don't feel good about anything that's been happening since he got hurt. It's not trending in a promising direction, to say the least. Goodness gracious. Okay. Chicago. You want to talk about the Bears? I do. I mean, I guess it has to be the defensive line. Like does they it, does it have to be the defensive line, Joe? Well, that's where I'm going to go. So you you can choose to do what you want here. Um, but this is such an undermanned position group that it, it, it skews my entire perception of this football team. And I like Justin Fields a lot, and I like what they've done offensively, and I like their schedule. But this defensive line, I look at it, and you've used this word unserious, and it just is. There's a bunch of backups. So where, like, if we have guys defined as quality depth or like, you know, they are what they are. But to me, your opportunity for your defensive line to really become something is with these incomplete evaluations like a Travis Gibson, like a, a Dom Robinson. You know, if if those guys who are very, very toolsy, you know, you got a couple of young defensive tackles in Zach Pickens and Gervin Dexter. Those you, those guys have to be home run picks for Chicago and, yeah. and have to be home run picks like right off the jump. Yes. Those toolsy defensive linemen that you have here need to be things because I don't I don't take your football team seriously because your defensive line is not serious. And I think it's a really important part of being a good football team. My answer is Justin Fields. Like they, there was a lot invested to, to improve the situation around him. We were worried about the situation year one turns out the position or the, the, the supporting cast really doesn't get a whole lot better in year two. You use your first round pick and Darnell, right? You trade away from Jalen Carter to get Darnell, right? You trade out of the first overall pick to help get DJ Moore in house and really build up everything that's around Justin Fields. He's obviously a, a very talented player, but, He's a unique individual, and that makes him a polarizing player to talk about, which I absolutely hate. But, like, this all has to start coming together because you're in a window now where, like, you've – the trajectory of your team the last three years has kind of been building towards this. And if it doesn't manifest, you're going to have to ask yourself some hard questions. So I, I don't just look at Chicago for this year. I look at the big picture in Chicago. It's got to be Justin Fields, and we got to be more efficient as a passer. We have to – avoid more negative plays. We have to get the ball out of our hands faster with more consistency. Our decision-making process has to speed up. Like all of that has to happen. And it's not just Justin, but it's the performance of Justin that is going to be the determining factor of how we talk about the bears eight months from now, six months from now. Are you calling this a make or break season for Justin Fields? It has to you have to show that you're moving in the right direction. I'm not saying that it's like you're going to make the pro bowl. You got to pass for 4,000 yards or they're going to get rid of you. But if it doesn't improve, you're going to have to look yourselves in the mirror and say, we got to change something philosophically about how we're playing with this player. And that's going to be an uncomfortable position to be in when you burn two years with putting bad players around him 
And now you're asking yourself if you need to change the scheme or if you keep going in this direction. Yeah. Be t- it's tough. If you go Trubisky fields and neither one hits, that's tough. That's yeah. too like, Hey, we want to go on this course and that's good. That, it's you talk about setting your football team back. That That's, that's how you that's, do it. That's how you do it. Yeah. So, I'm optimistic though for fields, man. Let's go. I, I feel good about it too, but you know, I'm, I'll, I'll be buying some, some field chairs and fantasy for sure. Yeah, I, uh, nobody cares about my fantasy football team, but right. he is my my dynasty quarterback. So uh, let's go, Luke Getze. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna switch gears. Go over to the uh, the AFC. Is that the plan? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna do that. We'll be right back. Talk about the AFC North and the X factors that exist there. All right, Joseph, it's time to switch gears to the American Football Conference and talk about the Cincinnati Bengals. The single greatest X-factor component to the Cincinnati Bengals is blank. How long several is? <laughs> Did you see that? Just Zach Taylor, several, several means, weeks. It means several. several weeks. Several weeks, several means several. Um. Man, there's some answers here that I, I think make a lot of sense, but I, my mind goes to the secondary here, where you've had some turnover, right? Your your entire safety group of Von Bell and Jace, Jesse Bates, they're now in the NFC South, and you're leaning into your first round pick, Dax Hill, um, who you you know you had foresight. This was part of the plan here. Didn't play a ton as a rookie, but obviously you're expecting him to step in and, and be an impact playmaker as well with Nick Scott, who you signed from the Rams. But I think between Dax Hill and then Cam Taylor Britt. Because I, what, what's so important to me about Cam Taylor Britt at corner is Chidobia Wuzie is coming back off of that injury, right? You're just kind of not exactly yeah. sure what he looks like. That some you know, everybody progresses differently, but you know, he's gonna be put into some big matchups. And I thought Cam did a really good job down the stretch and got better and better throughout the course of the season. But now it's like, hey, you're entering this year, you're you're we're expecting you to be a starter, you're you know, you have the chance to be a pillar of this defense. Um, how can you do that? So I think it's Cam Taylor Britt, it's Dax Hill in this secondary, replacing some big pieces. And uh, you know, that that's so much of the Bengals is Joe Burrow, but it's also Lou Anarumo and his schemes and how he deploys his talent on defense that makes him one of the best in the league. And he's got some new new pieces there on the defensive backfield. So I will agree with you. Um that the secondary is where I go. If I were to acknowledge something else, it would be the right tackle position. Uh, with Jonah Williams switching sides, uh, how that experience goes. They they didn't really get what they were probably hoping for from Lyle Collins before he got hurt last year anyway. Um, so that is kind of a – you brought in Orlando Brown Jr. There's some dollars that have been spent here, and you've made the decision, and you're paying a lot of money for Orlando Brown Jr. and Jonah Williams combined. Jonah, of course, playing on the fifth-year option this year. How's that go? Hmm. That, for me, is the offensive X factor. For Jonah Williams himself, I think showing more versatility is going to be great for him. It'll be huge. Yeah, so like I know he didn't want to do this, but like doing this might be a good thing for you. Might help, might help your bottom line Yeah, when you hit the open market next year. You might want to just ask him, hey, can I play left guard? That might even be the best thing for right. you there. Now, now you can play him guard or tackle money. I mean, yeah. We'll see. All right. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens? It's the wide receiver room, right? I thought you might go there. So go there and I'll go somewhere else. Well, I mean, we, we can just openly talk about how Rashad Bateman has hardly played any football in his first two seasons. And you have a first round pick in Zay Flowers and you have Odell Beckham who has played a half a year in the last two years. Like that's what we're, we're heaping the praises and Todd Monken's out here talking about getting rid of the wristband and we got to learn how to recite the plays and give it back to the team and really digest the calls. And that's the wide receiver room that, that we're made working. me cringe. It did. It did. Because I, t- I sent it to you. I'm like, mm, this is kind of a, a weird spot to have, have put your quarterback in for the last several seasons that they're, we're just a wristband offense. We're just going to tell everybody 14 and go. <laughs> um, so for the passing game, that kind of massive change with players that are complete unknowns. And and look, Odell looks great in training camp videos. We'll see, right? I'm optimistic. But then you have Zay Flowers as a rookie, and you never know what you're going to get with rookies because they haven't played any snaps yet. 
and then Rashad Bateman. And like, okay, if Odell and Rashad Bateman get hurt and miss any significant time again, what is this passing offense going to look like? And I know you can play that game with just about every position room in the league, but it feels like the probability of it happening based on the track record of the players is higher than just playing that hypothetical game with any position group across the entire league. Totally agree. I think you can also mention the edge rushers, Odafe Owe, David Ajabo yep. is yep. really critical pieces here in terms of unknowns that uh, could really change the course of the season for them. So let's agree to agree on Pittsburgh. There's an yeah. answer here, right? You're going to say it's Kenny Pickett. It is Kenny Pickett. How is it not Kenny Pickett? No, it, well, it, it, it is. It is Kenny okay. Pickett. So but I feel do... good. I feel good about it. Yeah, I feel like they've they've done a, a nice job. You love the addition of Broderick Jones, right? You love the addition of Isaac Ciamalu. You've massively upgraded the left side of your offensive line. Do I think Allen Robinson is going to be a thing? No, but like, okay, whatever. Like, go for it. It's fine. You have Deontay Johnson, who's a quality starter in the NFL. George Pickens showed promise. Pat Fryermuth is a volume target at tight end. Pat Fryermuth's excited about the Cole Komet deal. Let me tell you I that. I bet he is. I bet he is because he's going to get north of what Cole Komet got for sure. Well north, yeah. Yep. Najee Harris. So, like, you, you got a cast there. You feel good about it, but at the end of the day, you're a second-year quarterback who didn't start at the beginning of the year last year, so you have a small sample size of starts. We just – we got to see it. Yeah. So, for we, me, it's Kenny Pickett. We predicted Pittsburgh to win 10 games. So – right. We we have high expectations for the Steelers. And they're a good football team, and their their uh, their schedule is real nice, real nice. Their schedule is outstanding, even despite playing in the in a very good AFC right. North. Right. Which brings us to the Browns, another team that you could very easily point to the quarterback position and say this is the X factor for this team. Do you want to go anywhere else? No. I think it's it has we'll, to be Deshaun Watson because we'll we love agree. we love the remainder of team here. Yeah, it's great. It's a really good roster, and Deshaun finding his game is just everything here. And I think what what should get you excited if you're a Browns fan is that like, hey, we have evidence that this guy could be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. But you're discouraged, right? Because the last Two years. Last time you saw it was the end of 2020, 2021. One. Yeah. And, and since then, it's been sitting out a year. And then he wound up, was it how many starts did he have? Six five, last year? Five or six. What What just annoys me, and I've said it before in this podcast, I didn't see growth within that. You know, I thought that, like, as the games moved on, you would see Deshaun look a little bit more like him. No, I thought he looked the same. So, full off season. Distractions are certainly down. They've added around you with Elijah Moore, who I think is a nice piece for this this team. Mm -hmm. Offensive line seemingly couldn't be more stable. Amari Cooper, I love. Best running back in the NFL, Nick Chubb. Right. Best running back in the NFL, Nick Chubb. According to Kyle Krabs. <laughs> and I think he's the best pure running. Like if, if Taking a handoff, it's Nick Chubb. Okay, that's fine. The best pure it. runner. I'll take it. It's Nick Chubb. I'll take it. Anything else? If you had to say something else here, what would you say? Interior defensive line depth. Yeah, that's good. Martin Emerson potentially having to take a big, you know, full year here. He looked promising, but doing it for a full year, yeah. Not regressing in year two. It's kind of a... And your interior defensive line depth, I mean, not that you could really count on much from Perry on Winfrey, but, like, he's no longer around. So, like, right. one it's of your options is gone. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's definitely it. So and that is definitely it for the North X factors, which means we are out of here. This series is to a close the next two days. It's going to be some takes from Joe and I individually. Uh, we're going to go over some of our hot takes throughout the league. And then we will come together without consulting with each other. We will listen to each other's hot takes that we don't know what they are before we listen to our own shows. And then we're going to go through what bets we want to make with each other for the season which would be a lot of fun. So that's coming up next here on Locked on NFL Scouting. Plan accordingly. Hit subscribe. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Make it a great rest of your day, and we will talk to you all again soon.